have you ever wanted to quest and save the world? How about become a master of sword and the berserk? Or what if you could even become a mage or sorcerer who can bend the world to their will with powerful magics? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then Dungeons and Dragons is most assuredly the game for you. D&D, as it's called, is a fantasy role-playing game that has captivated gamers and critics for decades. The game has been in production for over 40 years and has sold well the entire time. The gameplay is fun and unique, sparking many variations on the core rules made by players over the years. There have been some controversy surrounding the game, however, sometimes even on whether or not it is deadly. Even through all the criticism, there are still good aspects of the game to be found, thus warranting its large and loyal fan base. Dungeons and Dragons has had a long road to get to where it is today. It all started when Gary Gygax took his love of tabletop war games and decided to create a new genre with some of his friends. He first made Chainmail, an otherwise classic war game that was unique in that it was put into a fantasy set. Another person, Dave Arneson, used that game's rules to get a campaign called Blackmore running, a universe he created set in the Great Kingdom. His game was in many ways like an early version of Dungeons and Dragons, clearing the way for new ideas to take root. In 1972, Arneson took Gagax's game, and in 1973, they collaborated to draft the very first version of Dungeons and Dragons. They published the first edition of the game in January of 1974, and it was a huge hit in the gaming community. By 75, their publisher had to print more copies just to keep up with demand. And by 1976, they had to add supplements to the game, like campaigns and manuals, because players had already gone through all of the original materials and needed more to play. The game's popularity continued to rise until by 1982 it had become a cultural icon, popping up in TV shows and movies. By today, there is no doubt that Dungeons & Dragons has had a huge influence on the gaming community. Even the hit Netflix series Stranger Things opens this very first scene onto a half-finished game of Dungeons & Dragons. The gameplay of D&D has enthralled players for decades and for good reason. First, you must make your character. You can pick from any race or class you can imagine. You can be a halfling rogue, an elven druid, or even a half-demon crusader. The only limit to your character is your imagination. Once you have yourself, you will need a DM, or dungeon master. The DM controls the gameplay, story, and interactions, and they decide what players can reasonably do within the universe of Dungeons & Dragons. This means that they can decide to have your half-fairy druid randomly fly into the air whenever they sneeze, or if your attack will succeed or not. Now that you have yourself in a DM, you will need a party. A party is a group of two or more adventurers working together to get through a campaign. You can have anywhere from two to over a hundred people playing at the same time. Now that you have all the humans, you will need materials like a battleboard, markers, character and enemy pieces, dice, a campaign, and a space to play. A battleboard is a gridded board used to map out an area and keep track of players and enemies. You will need markers to draw on the battleboard, and player pieces, which are highly customizable, to keep track of everyone. These player pieces are sold by many companies for players to use and paint. Now there are similar enemy pieces, but most people just prefer to use dice. Speaking of dice, you'll need lots of them to play Dungeons and Dragons. Most people will have seven to eight differently sided dice for the game, although they aren't normally this big. The number you roll determines the effect of your next action. A seven, you successfully drink the river water and fail to contract dysentery. Good job. Finally, you will need a campaign. A campaign is a pre-made story a DM can use to guide their players through an adventure. Now you're ready to start playing. A campaign will normally start off with some background on a world and a problem that said world is having. From there, the party decides what to do, whether to save the world or doom it. Only the party knows. In the 80s, there was a huge anti-Dungeons and Dragons movement. Part of this movement was a comic called Dark Dungeons that details Debbie's induction into a witch's coven, a practicing group of witches through Dungeons and & Dragons and how it ruined her and her friends' lives. In the first panel, it shows Debbie and Marcy playing Dungeons & Dragons together, but then Marcy's character dies. She's upset and runs off, saying that now that her character is dead, she is dead as well. From there, Debbie is trained in the occult through Dungeons & Dragons and learns how to use powerful dark magics. She uses them for evil, making her father buy her Dungeons & Dragons materials. Later, Debbie gets a call to go over to Marcy's house, and when she arrives, she finds Marcy dead unable to cope with the death of her character. Debbie is then spoken to by one of her friends who tells her that he has been praying for her and that she should go see a priest. She goes and renounces Dungeons and Dragons as the evil thing it is. She then burns all of her occult materials and is declared cleansed. 
This comic was intended to make players think twice and quit, before their souls were forever destroyed by it. In the late 20th century, there was also a huge media crisis surrounding Dungeons and Dragons. There were several key events that really helped spark this craze. In 1979, James Dallas Egbert III vanished from his college dorm and was not heard from for several days. He was very smart, a child prodigy even, and as such, his parents hired a private investigator to attempt to locate him. Days later, he was found in the steam tunnels underneath the school, alive but in an episode of self-harm. His death, a year later by suicide, was blamed on his Dungeons and Dragons playing rather than his depression or drug abuse. Another really big event was the death of Irving Lee Pulling, a high schooler who played. He committed suicide in 1982 and the media jumped all over it. They blamed his death on his D&D playing rather than his mental health issues. At this point, the media was so enthralled with their narrative of D&D being an evil game that causes players to kill themselves, that they chose to forget the underlying psychological problems behind the stories and people they were covering. Now that you know about all the evils of Dungeons & Dragons, let's talk about how the game can actually be beneficial to players. D&D makes you think critically, work with others, and think about and solve problems quickly. In a dungeon, you will often come across fictional life or death situations you will have to solve quickly in order to survive. Imagine that you and your party have just stumbled across an ancient temple from one of the world's earliest civilizations. You all walk up to the immense structure and go in through the front door. As you enter, the door slams shut behind you with a loud bang. Your party's cleric, or healer, strikes a torch ablaze, and by its meager light, you can just start to see the far wall. Upon that wall are some inscriptions in an ancient text with three levers surrounding it. You all walk forward to investigate when suddenly a giant spider drops from the ceiling. Now, you and your party must decide what to do. Will you rush forward, flicking levers and seeing what happens? Or will you send the spider to its doom? This is the true magic of Dungeons & Dragons. The power of choice. In d, &D you can do anything. Empowering players to use their imaginations and social skills to solve problems. Dungeons & Dragons is also a great way for anyone to create friends and have fun. Now, I'm sure you've all heard the stereotype of D&D players being nerdy losers in their mother's basements huddled over a dark table covered in dice and Doritos. This image isn't the reality, however. How can this stereotype be true if Vin Diesel, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Three Tower World Series champion Kurt Schillings all play? Now much like our speech and debate team in D&D game can have an all-state football player, FFA president, and a band geek. The game doesn't care what gender, race, or age you are. The only race or age that matters is that of your character. People from all walks of life have enjoyed this unique and timeless game. So the next time you're bored and looking for something fun to do, or want to grow your cult, think about playing Dungeons & Dragons. It has a rich history, exciting gameplay, and controversies to spark conversation. But just remember, if your dungeon master asks you to join their witch's coven, say no. Thank you.